Hello everyone, this is Seidai Tamura, an artist from the biggest little city in the world, originally from Tokyo, Japan. Welcome back to my channel. As I promised in my last video, this segment is about an underpainting process or also known as wash in. Now that I've been working on my drawing for a while and made some corrections and modifications, it's time to switch my thinking mode from two-dimensional to three-dimensional. The subject that I'm trying to render here is obviously a three-dimensional person, but when I try to capture the outlines of this three-dimensional object onto a two-dimensional painting surface, I needed to eliminate my perception that this object has a three-dimensional depth. I needed to focus on the subject's two-dimensional aspect, which means capturing a bunch of flat geometric shapes that represent the head, torso, arms, or legs. Now that task is done, I'm ready to take in the fact that the subject is made up of volume as well. So how do we represent volume or depth on a two-dimensional surface? We realists use highlights, midtones, shadows, and all in-between values to create an illusion of depth in our paintings. However, it's easier said than done. How do we switch our brain to think in three-dimensionality, meanwhile we've been thinking in two-dimensionality? And that's when an underpainting process comes in to sort of ease into the three-dimensional thinking mode. But one might ask, how do you actually figure out how dark or light paints to apply on this dark white canvas? Good question. Well, that's where Tony's wisdom comes in, and it is the concept of dark to light. To execute this concept, I would start off to look for the darkest part of the setting where the model is situated, or it could be the darkest shadows on her body. Once you spot the darkest area, I would mix my paints to match that darkest value, hues, and chroma, and start to lay in that paint on my canvas. So now this is the starting point. This darkest value becomes a reference point to compare and determine all other values in this painting. This first stroke of paint is supposed to be the darkest, so everything else has to be lighter than this value. So you just have to figure out how much lighter they are. To make this process easier, I would use thin, transparent, and diluted paints to establish values relationships. The idea is that you don't want to slap on heavy, thick globs of paint to start navigating through this uncharted territory. You're still guessing and unsure of how dark or light things are. By using thinner, diluted paints, you would have room for corrections and changes later on. Another concept, and possibly the most important concept of thinking in three dimensions, is understanding of how a light interacts with an object. I've mentioned this concept in my other videos, but if you want to create credible illusions of three-dimensionality, you must have this idea included in your thinking process all the time. As a reminder, I would briefly go over how a light behaves when it hits an object in a general way. I will use a round ball as an example to illustrate the idea since rounded objects are one of the most common objects found in real life. Also, the light source in this illustration is a single light source to get my point across easier. When a light hits an object where the spot that is the closest to the light source is called a highlight, from that area on, the values of the ball would gradually get darker. The progression of the darkening of the values continues until it reaches an area called the terminator or coarse shadow. As the light passes beyond the terminator edge, the values will get considerably darker since the area of the ball is now in the shadow. However, the values in the shadow will get slightly lighter towards the bottom of the ball due to the effect of a reflected light from a surface where the ball sits. As you become mindful of this concept, you will begin to see this phenomenon happening throughout the figure that you are rendering. It is crucial to capture these effects on the human body in order to create a convincing three-dimensional sound figure painting. 
In the next video, I will discuss how we finalize the process by employing a procedure called a form painting. This is going to be the phase where we address all the issues and get to the bottom of this quest for realism. Thanks for watching and have a great day.